Okay, it's time for a little rift action um, on the home test course. I took it out last weekend and it done pretty well. I got a 2700 in it. Um, I can't remember what the pinion I have on it. I think it's like a 13, maybe a 14 or 15, and it's a 56 tooth spur gear. Down in there, Holmes 2700, uh, Trailmaster Pro, Mamba X, Helios uh, 3S battery. I don't know if you can see it. And I'm not. Oh, there it is. I think it focused. Um, I just got the new Trail Sway Bar and Lynx. Um, before they came, I got the Trail Trailing Arms. Not sure if that's focusing. So they're already on it. I haven't got the other stuff on. I just got off work and it's going to start raining anytime. And I haven't actually tested it on this course. Um, so since changing the transmission, I know it done terrible. I just had to, it would call real bad because of the gearing and I would have to launch it and then it would do big flips and shit and not land well as this course is rough oh yeah oh i forgot i got the drag brake turned clear off which it doesn't have the strongest drag brake anyways it's heavy and it's still not geared super low by any means and uh the holmes shv 650 that I bought just got it like last week put it on there ran it for 30 minutes 30 40 minutes maybe like almost a full battery pack and everything was fine and I uh, put it away and uh, got it out this past weekend didn't even test anything just grabbed the truck and my batteries and went to a crawl spot and doesn't work at all it tried to work for about a half a second and then it was like it lost power or something and wouldn't do anything. But I mean this is this is a lot more intense than it looks. Um, these tires aren't the greatest rock crawling tires, but man that Savox, I know it's not my radio because the Savox works. Um, I changed um, everything for direct power, uh, nothing. Uh, my SHV 800 is working perfectly fine on my TRX G-Speed. Um, so I hooked it up completely on it, nothing. So the 650 just died or something. I don't know what's up. I messaged Holmes yesterday on the contact us on their website about it. And I haven't heard anything back yet. Um, hopefully I will pretty soon because uh, that servo, I didn't, I mean, I might have put like 30 minutes on it and it seems to be dead. It glitched and worked for like a half a second a couple of times and that was it. So, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to have another one. It was, it was doing really good. I don't know what the issue is, and my tug buddy, I haven't even really used it yet. I just put it on my TRX and spooled it up. Just used it enough to to wind up the, the winch line, and it was uh, glitching too, like my SHV 800. So I don't know if they got bad potentiometers, but the 650 just doesn't work at all. I don't know what to do with this. And they're not exactly cheap servos, any of them. The tug buddy was like 130 something. The 650 was 129. I think the tug buddy was 139 and the 800 was 139 or 149, which it still works fine, but it glitches a little bit here and there, but it's strong as an ox. I mean, it's amazing. And I absolutely, I am not bashing on Holmes Hobbies whatsoever. They are my go-to um, for motors always. I run Mamba X's 
while I have a copperhead too. I'm not, I don't like the copperhead as well as I do the Mombex. Um, I just don't. It seems to eat batteries and really doesn't seem to be as powerful. But uh, let me change positions here. And sometimes my rocks move on me, so hopefully I won't break my damn neck. Because this is steep enough. It's short, but it's steep. And if a rock moves, I could take a nasty fall. I really don't. But see, that's what I hate. The Savox works, but it's just not strong enough. It won't turn right there at all. There's too much tension on it. I have to actually move the truck to get the damn wheels to turn. And people love tire flex. How about that for some tire flex? <laughs> Those are 2.2 RC four wheel drive mud bashers. They do really, really good for uh, hill climbing. So I'm going to say bouncing because that's basically what rock bouncing is is hill climbing. I mean the drag brake's not the strongest on this and it's set to full and I've got the aux wire hooked up so that I can turn it on and off depending on what I'm doing and that's the only bummer about this is while well, my course is really bad about axle draggers and skid draggers everywhere there's pretty good gaps in the rocks just perfect to uh, get you hung up and see my damn wheel won't turn until I move the truck a little bit and I think this is the stronger I'm not sure but I think this might be the stronger of the two Savox surveys that I have looks like I said the, H, or the 800 get out of there stick the 800 is still in my TRX so and I have the blue case Savox I think it's the 1212 or something like that. It's on my Wraith. And this is, I don't even remember which one this is. It's the orange piece there. And I thought it was maybe the stronger one, but I don't know. Maybe it's not. My dog's yapping. Because the storm's coming. Let's get a little more in. Hopefully tomorrow when I get off work, um, I'll be able to get at least some of the new trail parts put on this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go for the links first or the sway bar, but either way I'm going to get it all on before I take it out to the woods again. So, but I mean, that's pretty good crawling for a rift which was never intended to do it and it would not do it with the two speed I could I mean I was like it would make my ESC and motor and everything get hot and the ESC would actually shut off because I've got the thermal protection shit turned on at I think medium but uh I mean you'd pull up on something like this and it just wouldn't move until you really wicked it and then it would do a big backflip and tumble down it was nasty but with the three gear and everything else is still the same. Look at that. It's beautiful. Never really was a fan of two speeds anyways, most, mostly because of the whole shift servo and how they don't tend to do very well. But that transmission just had a lot of resistance to it. Man, I'm gonna scuff up those I already scratched the new trail trailing arms a little bit already last weekend, but this will really put a scuffing on them. If I even get loose, I really bellied it out right here. There it is. I'm not out of the woods yet, though. Damn, that steering is so weak. I'm so used to the Holmes servos, which are so strong that if you get the front wheels um, bound up, that 800, um, I can get the front wheels bound up and whip it back and forth. And if the front wheels can't move, it'll whip the ass into the truck back and forth. And that truck weighs uh, eight and a half, eight and a half pounds, maybe a little more. I don't remember exactly, but it's damn near as heavy as this Rift, which is like 8.75 or something. 
and shit like that. Think about changing the shocks, but I don't know, man. These shocks really aren't as bad as I thought. I mean, they still seem a little stiff to me, but which I probably need that for the bouncer part. But I mean, it's it's pretty stable. I can't really complain. It's not like bouncing uncontrollably it's really really pretty stable i mean it did really good hill climbing this weekend so i can't really complain too much but i'm seriously also thinking about upgrading from the 2700 which is a little tired i bought the the trailmaster pro 2700 i bought a 2200 and a 3800 all at the same time they're all uh years old or so and um, I had this one and the 2200 in my TRX4 Sport um, RTR that I had bought there about four three four years about four years ago and I sold it about a year and a half ago because I was thinking about getting out of it because I couldn't get anybody to go crawling with me anymore after I dumped a bunch of money in the stuff um, but I sold that one. I kept my old Gen 7 mud truck, which had the 3800 in it. And man, I was brutal on that motor. I didn't crawl for, do anything for a year. And I put that truck up muddy. Yeah, there's a little tire flex too. That sucks. I really didn't like it sitting there like that. But, uh, and I broke that motor back out. I disassembled the truck and gave my nephew all the upgraded parts on it to put on an A10, I think it is, and made that thing a freaking beast for what it is. I mean, it's a beast. Um, but anyhow, um, I decided to put that motor on my Wraith, and man, it was not happy. It was squealing and squalling, something awful. And I took it apart and it still had freaking mud in it I mean it was caked with mud it was all rusted inside um, but the bearing was what was squealing so I sent it in to Holmes for a rebuild he charged me I think it's like $15 for the rebuild even though it needed a new sensor board the damn sensor board was broke that was part of the problem that was happening that mud had gotten in there and somehow dried up and packed and then uh, when I fired it up and started running it again it actually broke the sensor board and that's when it really started squalling and making all kinds of noise and not doing very well at all but anyhow what I was getting to is I sent it to home $15 for the rebuild and um, it was like nine dollars for him to ship it back to me so it was basically 25 dollars to him and then it cost me about nine dollars to ship it in and he replaced the end bell the sensor board and uh cleaned it all up real nice and put um well in the end bell was a new bearing and i haven't even got to try it yet I mean, I know it's going to be sweet. It's going to be like new again. Because I know he wouldn't um, not do what he says he's doing. Because they emailed me and told me what all they found. And I was like, well, do whatever you got to do and just um, add it to the bill. And they said that they actually found um, a new end bell laying around. Slapped it on there with the bearing and all that, put a sensor board in it, and they sent it back to me. I think they had it for like a week and a half, something like that. And I'm itching to put it in this thing. Even if I have to gear it just a little lower, because I do want a little more speed for the hill climbing. Because some of the hills I climb, I don't I think if I had just a little more wheel speed, I think it would do even better. But I mean, it was doing fantastic with the 2700. I just think there's a couple more lines I could get if I had just a little more torque and wheel speed. That sucks though. That, I mean, those are big tires, 2.2 mud bashers. Um, they're pretty big tires. And they're, uh, uh, well, I cannot remember the name of the damn company, the wheels. They're cr 
crates. I know that. I just came up for some reason. It's just completely flipping my mind. I mean, the 2700 is not, not bad. It's got a little pep in its step. Well, I just did that again, so I'll show you turn around, go around one more time, and I'll put this off. Kind of hoping maybe stop it in a good place to get a, a nice screenshot. But I really do enjoy, I mean, I love the hill climbing. That's my second favorite thing, but I really love the slope crawl. I like to watch the suspension work and the tires fold and wrap around shit. I just really enjoy it. I never thought I would. Um, the only other RC I ever had before I got a crawler was uh, a Losey Muggy. So I was I was born a basher because, man, I beat the brakes off of that damn thing. It was a nitro. But I just got sick of... Uh, I'm bad about putting bigger tires on shit. <laughs> and uh, I, I destroyed clutches constantly in that damn thing. And I rebuilt the motor a couple of times. And, but I never could hardly keep it tuned. It was like a constant tuning thing. And I just got so freaking sick of it. So I was done for a long time. And then my brother and nephews got crawlers and got me into it. And I absolutely just fell in love with crawling. I, I was laughing at him at first, telling him, are you fucking crazy? He wants to go real slow, that ain't no fun. Oh, but it is. Just watching what these damn things can do. I mean, this isn't obviously not the most capable crawler. It's a freaking rock mouncer. But, um, these things, hold on, I'm going to walk up there and get up to the front. Oh, we got a view of it. I'm going to pull for that. Cause it's actually really, really steep. I mean, for the length of this, it's not. But for a normal crawler truck, it's vertical. Right there for a minute. For about 8 or 10 inches. But this thing being, I think this thing's like 15 inches long or some shit. But like my TRX, I can get over this shit easier. Because it's got portals and I got better clearance on the axles. I mean, it would help if my steering would work without spinning the wheels. That's causing some issues too. So I really hope I can get that 650 warranty and another thing. And I might even switch since this thing is a little bigger and a little heavier than the TRX. I might put the 800 on this and put the 650 on the TRX because the 19 ruptures are considerably smaller than these two tube bashers and lighter. I don't know how much lighter they'll be though. I got some uh, BAMF uh, inserts coming for the for the ruptures. Um, they shipped out. They'll be here Thursday. Today's Tuesday. So that'll be nice try those out and I ordered I guess too stiff and I just happened to comment on one of their posts what I ordered and what the truck was and how much it weighed and they were like ooh yeah you ordered way too stiff and they were like uh luckily we haven't made them yet because you just ordered so they changed my order and hopefully They should be the experts. I'm assuming I am <laughs> amateur at best. But um, I just hope that they're not too soft. Because uh, maybe I should have gave them even more information. The reason I got really stiff for the rear was because my TRX is a tow truck now. And I could be potentially towing this thing that weighs almost 9 pounds. I could be potentially towing my brother's TRX4 Heavy Chevy um, that weighs, we don't even know exactly what it weighs, but man, that thing is the heaviest RC I've ever touched. We're thinking it's somewhere in the at least 14 to 15 pound range. 
I mean, it is a freaking tank. Well, I think this thing does pretty good for out of a crawler there. And it would not do that with the stock gears, that's for sure. It would just get way, way too high, even in first. And the mesh was terrible with that motor plate that had the pre-drill holes. You can still see water coming out of the tire from where I washed it when I got home. Because <laughs> this weekend I wasn't in water at all. Um, with it. But I washed it because I got it dirty and a little bit muddy because it started just started raining. Um, about a half an hour before I got out of the woods. So, um, it did get a little bit of tacky red clay, that good old West Virginia red clay. Um, it's super snotty slick when it gets real wet, but when West Virginia clay gets just a little wet, it actually, um, because it's real loose shit, like on our hill climb, super loose, and you gotta have a massive amount of wheel speed to spin your way up the shit, but, uh, I can take the TRX, almost put it on its side up on that, on my fence there. Which the servo might give up the goat on this damn thing trying to do it. Or get it wedged, because I have got the TRX wedged, the tire wedged down in there. I know the motor's got an important to push. I'm just worried about the servo. Couldn't tell I get something done with the home servo. This and one other slip box is all I got. Man, I got way too preoccupied. I don't know where my dog went. So I'm going to have to uh, finish this up. Not to mention, good lord, I'm horrible about running long videos. I get too uh, gibbering. And lose track of time. Plus, I just enjoy the hell out of crawling. It's so much fun. I could just do it for hours and hours. I can't do it here for that long because obviously this is a very small course. But it's it's a good testing ground, which is basically what I made it for. It was just to test stuff before I go clear out in the woods because most of the places I go, they're not. They're not real far away, but they're not super close. And my favorite place, Pipeline, um, is extremely hard to get to. And I got myself in a pickle now, and it's going to roll. And there's no way it'll come up out of that. But, but where I had to keep moving the wheels to get it to turn, and I rolled it. And I don't want to get it dirty. So I want to take it back inside and know how I want to have to wash it again um, before I start putting the parts on it. But I'll just uh, toss it there somewhere. And maybe get a little still for a good, uh, hopefully a good screenshot. I'm sure I'll find better screenshots there. I also had a Night Rider light, a kit light, on the back of it, and the damn wires broke off of it. One crawl. But I got a motor too, and I'm hoping when I get it put together, um, it'll fill that hole perfectly where the ESC used to be. And look pretty cool. It's an LS7. Which I'm saying behind the times last I heard of was an LS1. It's supposed to be a new um, Chevy like Corvette and Camaro motor, but I'm going to end this anyhow, and hopefully soon I'll have me a new 650, or they'll fix that one, whatever the issue is, I don't care, I just want it back, and what, I just want it working, but that is my rift with the uh, Axial AX10 SCX10-1 style three gear transmission on top of these 2700 kv from astro pro uh, mamba x and at the moment a weak ass whiny um 
Xbox server.